at the Nationals broke open a close game with the long ball in the late innings, cruising to a second straight win against the struggling Phillies. Tonight, they go for a sweep, and Max is on the mound. Just a little bit of afternoon rain here in Philly. Looks like the ball game is going to get off on time. The Nats and the Phils. Washington going for the sweep here at Citizens Bank Park. And it was a crazy May in terms of power numbers. So April showers brought May power for the Nats. And FP, then they cap off the night or the month, rather, with four last night. Yeah, Jason Worth got the party started. There's home runs flying at Nats Park. Now you go on the road, you're at Citizens Bank. The ball flying here off to Cincinnati after the game tonight. Ball's going to be flying there. But when you talk about the Nats, 69 home runs on the season. Daniel Murphy put them ahead for good last night with that big home run. He's been locked in. Then Danny Espinosa with a two-run home run made it 4-1. to one. And then my favorite one of the night, Steven Drew from the bomb squad. That's what I'm going with the bench from now on, the bomb squad. <laughs> Eight pinch hit home runs. And this, the inside the park variety. And watch the Daniel Murphy impersonation, right? There, <laughs> Steven Drew getting it done last night. The bench has been getting it done. Ball's flying everywhere. It's fun to watch. Look at the bottom line of what the Nats have been doing late in ball games. 12 home runs in the late innings. They're just bombing the ball all over the place. And it's been a fun month of May, but now June is here and the weather gets warmer. Who knows what's going to happen with this ball club? But I think that tells you something, those late home runs, because the guys are feeling out that process first couple of times through and then getting it done later in the game. Yeah, making the adjustments, getting a good game plan, seeing a pitcher a few times, and veteran hitters know how to do that. All right, Max Scherzer. He's a guy who's been the victim of some home runs by the other ball clubs. We know Max is capable of great things. He was very good here. The Phillies got him in D.C., kind of indicative of the season series so far. Well, in my opinion, guys are swinging too big off Max Scherzer. He has a reputation. He throws 97, and the hitters have been a little bit too comfortable against him. I'd love to see him move some feet here tonight against the Phillies. Yeah, the Phillies are not a power hitting team. Only the Braves have scored fewer runs and hit fewer homers. And then the bullpen. There's Rivero. There's Papelbon. They've gone back to back two straight nights here. Jonathan has 14. Felipe showing some emotion these days. These guys are fun to watch. And the offense and the bullpen clicking right now.
John Masson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. By Ocean City, Maryland, let us show you a good time in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And by your local Kia dealers, take advantage of Memorial Day weekend still going on with great deals during the Kia Summers on Us sales event. The boathouses on the Schuylkill River right out there past the Art Museum where Rocky has his gloves aimed. And here we are on the south side of Philly getting ready for game three of the series. There seems to be some sort of conspiracy going on in the Nationals dugout. The big question right now at Pete is does the fanatic have a spare set of keys for his four wheeler. He might have been fooled again. Well they sent the bad boy out to get his keys then he handed it to bench coach Chris Spire while he was on the first base side. So now we'll see the fanatic try to start his ATV over there. I don't Let's see get another spare set like you said or he knows how to hot wire it ain't going nowhere. And a, a footnote on the fills <laughs> taking the field at 706 for a 705 ball game. They have seemed to be in no hurry at all to get these ball games underway. All right here we go start it up. Vroom vroom here we go. Wait. He knows the keys are not there. Okay. Now the last time this happened was several years ago. Jason Worth was the prime suspect. And they had to actually get about five guys to lift that thing. <laughs> Chris Myers tell them, come get him. And take it over the left field <laughs> rail there. Uh, they're going to give him the keys. All right. Ain't too proud to beg. <laughs> so all's well for the fanatic now. It's not moving yet. There, there he goes. goes. <laughs> the Nats are hitting 242. They're eighth in the league in runs. Third in homers behind the Mets and the Cardinals. And Daniel Murphy leading the way. 17 hits now during his latest bunch of heroics. A 10 game hitting streak. Three homers, seven RBIs over that time. Murph starts the night at 397. Here's 26 year old Adam Morgan. He pitched for the Crimson Tide at Alabama. Yeah, fastball 91 slider curveball secondary pitch you got a pretty good change up at 80 miles an hour fastball average is 91 last start on the 27th against the Cubs he went up against John Lester and was the 6 2 loser worked just four innings gave up six runs on eight hits apparently he's made some adjustments between starts had a good bullpen working on keeping his head still we'll keep an eye on that they actually showed him video side by side of his delivery and John Lester's and they're trying to kind of emulate that with his keeping his head still partly cloudy some rain earlier so it's muggy 79 degrees at game time first pitch and Chris Heisey with a check swing Morgan able to take a couple of hops we're underway at 708 with out number one so this is what le led up to the key stealing incident and the fanatic probably bored couldn't resist <laughs> and Chris Spire says I'll get you <laughs> I think Steven Strasburg enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, and there's uh, the guy who was the guy who did not give him the keys back a couple of years ago. As I said, they had to lift the four wheeler off the field. So here's Jason Worth in the series, two for eight, a homer, two RBIs. Got the party going last night with a one out home run, first inning. Morgan has never faced the Nats. He has faced a couple of Nationals players with other ball clubs. Murphy as a Met and Revere before. Most of the guys getting their first look at him. Jason on a good run right now. 17 ball games, nine runs, a couple of homers, seven RBIs, hitting 279. Fastball away. There he is. Another home home series, five out of eight. Worth has walked 13 times this year. That's the changeup. He was way out ahead. 
Well, everything by Morgan early has been down in the zone. Last time out, he allowed three home runs that accounted for five of his six runs. So you can see the adjustments he's trying to make versus last start, keeping the ball down. 3 2, he does keep the ball down. Worth tagged after the block by Cameron Rupp, two outs. So Bryce Harper not in the lineup again tonight, and that's just fine. The ball club's won a series. They're going to have an off day in Cincinnati tomorrow, then a night game on Friday. So another 48 hours for Bryce to feel better, and we'll see how Dusty plays it once the Nats get to Ohio. Well, you won the first two games of the series. You're going for a sweep tonight. It may be different if you lose the first two games of a series or you split the first two games. The fact that they won two allows them to rest another day. And Murphy takes a fastball. He's not happy. He was letting Adam Morgan hear it. No way to get out of the way of that. Daniel Murphy hit by a pitch for the third time this year. Well, he's all amped up, ready to go, and after hitting a home run, the go-ahead home run last night, he gets a first pitch fastball. And here's the sound. So nobody on. Two outs. And that's been your hottest hitter. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say that was fishy. I don't think he watched his home run last night. Stay tuned. Yeah. I'm a rookie pitcher and Max Scherzer's the guy facing yeah. me. Uh, uh, we'll see. I'll just leave that open ended too. So here's Ryan Zimmerman in the series two for eight. Seven for 16 over his last seven ball games. Against the left hander who might work him away. A lot of room on the right side. He's going to throw over four times. I think that's <laughs> policy here. If you hit a guy, throw over four times in a row. Murph, not much of a lead. And Zimmerman takes one low. He goes the other way. That's a beautiful swing. It is fair into the corner. Murphy heading for third. David Lowe knows he has to hurry, and then he can't get a handle on it. And Murphy scores. So the hit batter comes back to haunt Adam Morgan as Ryan Zimmerman goes as well as you can the other way. Well, there goes a the no hitter. There goes a the shutout. Ryan Zimmerman going the other way. Look at him stay on that ball nice. And tailing away, and David Lowe has a little bit of trouble with it as you see the big carom off the corner. That was going to be close at the plate. If he picks that up and relays it, we got to play at the plate. And because that ball shot far away from David Lowe, that allowed Daniel Murphy to score easily. So if you thought that was on purpose, the best way to get back at somebody is tack on an earned run. Yeah, touch home plate about two minutes later. Anthony Rendon, he was telling Daniel Murphy he could stay up and not slide on that trip to home. So here he is looking for his first hit of this series. And that's a little tapper that the pitcher takes care of. So Heisey and Rendon bookend the inning by first pitch comebackers. But in between, Zimmerman puts the Nats on top.
getting a little treatment forearm on the sleeve near that elbow from Paul Osard. Look at all the concern in the dugout. That's your guy. So here's Herrera, who's been good against Max. Four walks in RBI, five for 16. In this series, O'Double is two for seven with a base on balls. 425 on base percentage. Blanco, that's Andres Blanco in the lineup tonight. So is Tommy Joseph. Ryan Howard taking a seat. Franco not playing third tonight against Max Scherzer, who's five and one career against the Phils. They had one bad frame last start against the Cardinals. Otherwise, he was real good. Lost that ball game six to two. Gave up five runs on just three hits over seven innings. He was happy afterwards that he saved the bullpen and really gutted one out. So we'll see how he fares here tonight. Fastball last start, average 94. First pitch swinging Herrera. Ball tailing toward the seats. Chris Heisey in left field tonight. Opponents are hitting 344 with five home runs on the first pitch this year off of Max Scherzer. That's probably why you saw Herrera swinging. Nats have scored their 50th first inning run. And this is game number 54. Herrera breaking ball no chance. Curveball just diving 0 and 2. Season series back even at 4 and 4. The Nats have won 4 out of 5 in this ballpark. Phillies 11th in the league hitting 233. Now that is somebody who looked like he was looking for off speed and the 96 was already past him. Yeah, usually he works up to that 96 but what was that third pitch of the game for Max Scherzer jumping out of his hand at 96 and this one starts with a strikeout for Max. Here's the defense behind Max tonight. Chris Heisey gets the start in left field. Michael Taylor is in center field. Jason Worth back and right for the second night. Espinosa Rendon, Murphy Zimmerman, and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. Here's Hernandez hitting 256 left handed and overall. Along with Herrera, they've been a problem for Max. 10 for 30 combined coming in. Hernandez 5 for 14. Rendon, like he was against the leadoff guy. In the baseline between second and third, respecting speed, two and zero. Oh. Hello in the zone, strike one. If you didn't catch it, Mets lost today. Matt Albers of the White Sox was unbelievable in the 13th inning. An American League pitcher doubling, going to third in a wild pitch and scoring on a sack fly. And uh, he was the pitcher of record already. Then he set him down in the 13th. And the Nats could lead the Mets by three at the end of the night. Scherzer right in there, three and two. Not sure where Cesar Hernandez thought that one was. So it's a two and a half game lead right now. Marlins hosting the Pirates again. 3 2 pitch, threw him a strike. Here comes Murphy. One hand, got rid of it, knowing a fast runner was going down that line. Two outs. Well, nice play by Murphy, and let's see what happens right here. You know, it's it's not my job to speculate, but back in the old days, if you hit my guy, and he's our guy, our number three hitter who's one of the hottest hitters in baseball, it was two outs, nobody on. Here comes their three hitter, two outs, nobody on. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Blanco hitting 274. It was inside. I don't know if we got catcher, umpire, or both. Dana Demuth behind the plate tonight, the 34 year veteran crew chief. Got the umpire. That's a beautiful changeup right there. 1 1. Blanco three for six career against Max. 32 year old veteran. 
Hit 292 for this ball club last year. Target away. It's a defensive stay alive swing. Hitters in a 1 2 count this year off Max hitting just 188. Swing and a miss and a hard slider down and in. Scherzer. What a good shutdown inning to start his night after the Nats take the lead. Ramos, Taylor, and Espinosa straight ahead. The Nats on top, 1 0. Murphy hit by a pitch. Zimmerman, a two out double. Here comes Jeep with some more numbers. So there's May. The record not that great because it was a struggle for a while, but two winning months. Runs per game went up. Home runs, a quantum leap. And the staff ERA went up as well, but a whole lot more run support. Warm night at the ballpark. Should be carrying. Ramos, Taylor, and Espinosa against Adam Morgan, 11 pitches, six strikes, first inning. <laughs> Phillies will give him left center. Sort of bunching him toward the gap with Herrera and Lowe in right. As expected, the first pitch outside. That's weird as I never heard the peanut lady here because the cards always used to be so big, but now the last couple nights I can hear her singing. Yeah, she gets nobody here. <laughs> the bank. They're averaging 24,566. That's number 12 out of 15 National League teams. 1 1 pitch. Ramos a tapper, fair ball, hugging the line near the bag, and a bare hand play. The throw off the bag, and Ramos has the ball deadens against the barrier. We'll go ahead and go to second base. We'll see if they give him a hit and probably a throwing error on Andres Blanco. Ramos was down the line pretty well there. A definite base hit. Is he Blanco going toward the Nats dugout? Has to throw across his body, and the throw kind of ran up the line. No chance for Tommy Joseph to scoop that. Joseph used to be a catcher. He's learning first base. And there goes the Buffalo. Once you start him, you can't stop him. He did hit the brakes pretty pretty quick for a Buffalo. 
Yeah, he wasn't going to run to second. Then the ball hit something that first base umpire Clint Fagan said was out of play, and he got second base. I think a fan reached over and grabbed it, and that's why it stopped. Here's Taylor. So Wilson Rumbles hit 333 in May, and he's batting 1,000 in June. Here's a classic situation for Michael A. Taylor. Now, at Pete, number seven guy in the lineup, are you still looking for him to push the runner, or do you want him to drive it somewhere? Well, I'd say with the one nothing lead, you've won the first two games of the series. You want to drive it that way, the right side. Don't just hit a tapper to second. Dusty Baker will take the tapper to second, but early in the count, 1 0, I'm trying to hit that gap in right center field. I want to trade places with Wilson Ramos if I'm Michael Taylor. And he's going to pull it right to the shortstop, and that freezes Ramos. Close. Out at first. One down. Danny Espinoza. Grounder, strikeout, fly ball, but he had something in the ninth inning in store for us. A tater. The six of the year. In a two to one game, he had a little breathing room all of a sudden. Made a four to one game, and then Stephen Drew would come up and thrill us all with an inside the park home run. The eighth pinch hit home run for the Nats. And if you missed it in the open, I'm, you know, you remember it was the Goon Squad 2012. I'm going with Bomb Squad. I mean, if you come off the bench and you hit that many pinch hit home runs, you're the Bomb Squad. End of story. Yeah, they've been amazing. So Danny, right handed. Just 31 at bats and only four hits. And then the Daniel Murphy imitation when he got back to the dugout last night was priceless. Ball in the dirt. Cameron Rupp's done some scrambling so far. In the series, Danny, that homer, two RBIs, a walk. He has scored a couple of runs. Off speed. That would have been a just like one of his bunts if he would go that way. One and two now. Join us for our first Budweiser viewing party at Nats Park on Saturday, June 4th. We won't be there, but you will be. Nats take on the Reds. Watch the game on the big screen from the field and enjoy $5 Budweiser's and Bud Lights. The more you drink of those, the better Bob and I sound. Gates open at 3 p.m. Visit nationals.com slash viewing party to watch your ball club hit some taters in Cincinnati. Geo Strasburg. It says we'll be there, so I had to you know, say we're not going to be there. Not We'd possible. like to be there. We could be there and call the game off the big screen. Yeah. But then Espinosa we, levels off and fouls it hard straight back. Then we miss beautiful Cincinnati. We just can't do that. Well. Just love sitting in that booth watching the Ohio roll by on its way to Paducah. Good old Paducah. Quaint little town Paducah is. Never been there, but I've heard bad things. So it'll be Geo, Strasburg, and Roark throwing at the Great American Ballpark. One and two. Espinosa hits it well to left center. Ball carrying, and Herrera will grab it. As it hung up for him, and Ramos still at second base, two outs. Look good off the bat, like a tweener. I know Dubal Herrera's got some closing speed out there, too. Well, you could say it would have been a sack fly if Michael Taylor would advance Wilson Ramos, but you never know if he would have got this pitch or they would even pitch to him with Max Scherzer on deck. But a nice swing by Espinosa, good jump by Herrera, and the ball just hung up there a little bit too long. Good communication. You see him screaming, I got it. All right, Max Scherzer, five hits, three RBIs this year. It's kind of a frisbee breaking in on him. But there's that Pete McCannon rule with the runner in scoring position. The opposing pitcher never gets a first pitch fastball. It's his rule. He doesn't let his pitchers throw him. That one. Change up to the outer edge. Now it's 0 2. 
Pete McCannon's ball club struggling. They're back to 500 now, five and a half behind the Nats. Losing five in a row, nine of 11. They made a player move today, by the way. A couple of names that you folks will be familiar with. Former Oriole, Jimmy Paredes, has joined the Phillies from Toronto, and they designated for assignment Emmanuel Burris. Paredes had been DFA'd by Toronto a couple of days ago, and they agreed to a cash deal today to bring that switch hitting infielder here. Scherzer on one and two. Healthy hack. That should get him another slider changeup. He was on that fastball. So Max will face at least five pitches here on the Nissan pitch track. Two two and now he has worked it full. Max Scherzer has walked once this year. Tanner Roark once. Joe Ross three times. And that's on the inside edge. And Max thinking I'll take that location for a strikeout sometime soon. Max Scherzer out for another inning of work. Scherzer's been pitching pretty well this season, but when he's been getting burned, it's been most of the time by left-handed hitters. That goes for batting average, it goes for slugging, and it especially goes for walks allowed. 20 of the 22 bases on balls that Max Scherzer has allowed this season have been to lefties, and there you see the difference, especially in opposing OPS. I asked Max yesterday how he's trying to combat this. He says his focus lately has been on solidifying the put-away pitches. That's the change-up, the curveball, and the cutter. He said when he's in 0 2 1 2 counts, he needs to execute either the elevated fastball or one of those three secondary pitches and get them to work for him, either for a swing and a miss or for weak contact. He doesn't want to keep missing out of the zone, giving up count leverage and turning a 1 2 count into suddenly a 3 2 count when the hitter has a much better chance at putting the ball in play hard. He's making sure those pitches turn into outs, preferably strikeouts, and not balls. So that's something that we'll look for Scherzer to try and accomplish today. He was successful in the first inning, guys. Three lefties retired, two of which by strikeout when he was up in the count by a significant margin. And the other on a routine ground ball to Daniel Murphy. Thank you, Dan. With our Coons.com sideline report, over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. Good stuff right there, Dan. 24 year old Tommy Joseph. 
Off to a good start as a big leaguer, 10 for 37, batting 270. We've seen him a couple of times in the series as a pinch hitter. He's from Phoenix, came over with Nate Shearholtz in the Hunter Pence deal back at the trading deadline 2012. That was only the third 2 0 count Max Scherzer's been in all season. Opponents were one for two off him in that count. In the air, right side. Murphy waving that he sees it because with the cloudy conditions here early in the evening, it almost appears to be twilight already. And Murphy, no problem with that one, letting everybody know. Let's go inside the numbers. Brought to you by Jeep. So get Max early or don't get him. Most of the earned runs, first three innings, two thirds of the homers, and the ERA, one third or so of what it is early in the ballgame. Brought to you by G. Yeah, first inning ERA 736, second 4.09, third 7.36, and then he just usually locks in. There's catcher Cameron Rupp. Started the ball game last night, went 0 for 3 with a walk. He has three career hits against Max in a home run. But Scherzer has struck him out five times. First inning, 14 pitches, 10 strikes. Up to 20 now. Jammed him. Right field, base hit. Cameron Rupp, first base hit of the series, and first of the night for the Phils. The second annual 80s, and like, can you say second annual and there's only been two? Returns to Nats Park Friday, June 2nd. Zim's going to be there with all his buddies. First 20,000 fans receive a Nats fanny pack while all fans will be able to enjoy a pregame concert with the leg warmers. For more information, you can purchase tickets, visit nationals.com slash 80s night. Ryan and Rupp are acting like they just saw that promo. Real smiling. Here's Freddie Galvis. Only nine more days of watching Zim play his bat. And a ball hooked foul. Yeah, I didn't hear any reports that <laughs> Peter Frampton, whose bus was parked yeah. outside our hotel, was seeking Ryan to join the string section. Yeah. Frampton comes alive. I love the way he sings Hell's Bells. Off speed, a really nice 80 dropping right in there. Max has had good command of the breaking ball so far. Galvis, three for 17 career against him. Ground ball, the Nets would have to turn it quickly. And he shows him 96 away. Galvis has grounded into seven double plays. Up a very short lead at first. Swing and a miss. 89 on the slide piece. Strikeout number three. Mercedes Benz will track it. Yeah, just a little cutter actually, maybe at 89. Didn't do a whole lot. Acted more like a changeup to Galvis than anything. He was way out front. Next up, the number seven hitter, Tyler Goodell. Good with the breakers right now is Max Scherzer. Goodell facing Max for the first time.
And this one into right field for Jason Worth. A base hit, a bloop, and that's all they've had off Max in the first two innings. Coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Anthony Rizzo leads the National League in All-Star balloting. Bryce does for outfielders. Felix Hernandez, a strained right calf, a blow to the 30 and 21 Seattle Mariners, a half game back of the Rangers. Matt Albers, as I mentioned earlier, got it done against the Mets. Now I was watching in the booth. You guys were in the press room. You know the media in there from the Phillies and the Nats and some of the Phillies employees. Where the Mets aren't exactly popular. Tell us about the reaction in there while he was going around the base. It was like watching it in a sports bar. We were all cheering. <laughs> watching him look all hitterish with his elbow guard on, leg kicking, taking pitches like he's been hitting his whole life. He had only two major league hits before that. He had never scored a major league run. Then he goes double left center field, barely gets to second base, and goes to third on a wild pitch and scores. Heisey looking to bunt. Picked up by the left hander. Chris Heisey is safe. So he's seen two pitches in this game. Come back here on a check swing to start it and a bunt base hit right here. Well, that's beautiful. Watch this. You don't see too many base hit bunts anymore. Guys don't do it. And Chris Heisey just showed you how to do it for you young players. And he looked and he saw Blanco back, laid it down. Now Adam Morgan had the fielder going toward the Nats dugout. No chance. So nicely done by Chris Heisey. Lead off man aboard here in the third. Love it. Yeah, Ramos infield hit last time to lead off. The boos are for Jason Worth, who struck out first time up. All right, here we go. Second time around the batting order. What did the Nats see that will help them as they faced Adam Morgan for the first time? Adam, as he often does when there's a left-hander pitching, asks the second base umpire to go to, to the third base side of the pitcher. He has not attempted a steal this year. So, new pace of play rule you get 10 pickoff throws a game. <laughs> and if you pick somebody off with one of them, you get an extra two. Oh boy. So, if you really, you know, you throw over early. It's everyone run till they tag you late because you used your pickoffs already. Yeah. But if you pick somebody off, you get two more. And four trips to the mound for a catcher. And that's it. Once you get fourth trip, you can't go out there. That's what signs are for. Get in the squat and give them a sign. Who's going to pay all these people to keep track of this and stuff? That's what scoreboards are for. 
Outside to Earth, 2 0. I got ideas, man. Lots of them. I feel like 10's generous, don't you? That's a lot. It is. But he's already used up like six. Ellickson used four on Bryce. I mean, it would make pickoffs way more exciting. That's in there, two and one. Then after 10, we wouldn't have to show them to you anymore. It's perfect. Bryce gets a breather here with the team winning a day off tomorrow. Two on to Worth, and he takes it right in there. First time up, Adam Morgan got Jason on a pitch in the dirt. That required a tag by the catcher. Target is inner half. So Jason not biting this time, and the count goes 3 2. Let's see if Dusty sends Chris Heisey here in a 3 2 count. Ben's already ready to pitch it. Check it out. Day off, bat in his hand, gloves on, ready for action. Love it. Payout pitch, nobody out. Heisey is running. Worth drives it to right. And the ball moving. David Lowe back to the track. It's a great swing by Worth. Hit that just about as hard as Zimmerman hit his double. And that's a low screamer that went to the track. One out. Good at bat by Jason Worth. Gets to a 3 2 count. Gets a fastball down the way. Covers the outer half. And good base running by Chris Eisen. Find the baseball, find the outfielder. Nice play by David Lowe, tracking that down. Pretty much everybody did what they were supposed to do on that play. Jason Worth, just bad luck. Here's Murphy. Drilled on the arm on the first pitch of his at bat tonight by Adam Morgan. Working him inside again. That was close. Breaking ball. Chris Heisey just hesitated. Then he decided to freeze it at first. So Murph with a couple taters in the series. We're going to show them to you. There was some pretty opposite field swings too, but home runs are sexy, so we'll show them to you. There's eight and there's nine. Last night was a bomb, and he didn't watch it. Just showing you right there. Yeah. Put his head down and ran. And the book on Murphy is to crowd him, so maybe that first pitch got away. Murphy fights one off. It's hanging up into center, and a sliding catch by Freddie Galvis. Safe as Heise again makes a good base running play. What a play by Freddie Galvis. Are you kidding me? And Daniel Murphy gets jammed, but Galvis with his back to home plate, a sliding catch pops up to his feet. And maybe doubled off Chris Heisey. They're going to look at it. Look at this play. All in one motion, throws to first. A strike at that, and it was close, and they might have got him. And you can't blame Chris Heisey. He has to be in an area that he can get to second if that drops, so he had to hustle back. It's a tough base running assignment for Heisey on that play, and they collided. Two big boys colliding at first right there. Phillies are going to challenge. He looked out to me, I'm not going to lie. Nets got the call, so it'll have to be indisputable. Well, this should be the decisive look, right? Exmo. Isaac's foot. Oof. Good hustle by Chris Heisey, but just an amazing play by Freddie Galvis.
boy, it's so, so very close. Just watching the scoreboard replays, watching the ones we showed you at home, giving you the best angles we have. And it's just hard to watch the ball in the back of his glove and the foot at the same time. I'm having trouble with that. We have really good seats here at Citizens Bank, and from where we're sitting, I thought he was out initially. Which is good news for Nats fans. Some never write on these. Is there enough to overturn? Yeah, I don't know if there is. It's taking a long time, and you, you yeah. think this one would take a while, right? But I still wonder out loud at times. I know you want to get it right, but if you can't make your mind up in two minutes or 90 seconds, whatever the time would be, here's the call. I see a safe. Phillies are out of challenges. So Clint Fagan made the right call. Inning still alive, and that's important based on what Ryan Zimmerman did first time up. In a situation just like this, he drove in Daniel Murphy from first with a double into the right field corner. Zimmerman now 25 RBIs. Eight for his last 17. Three, four, nine in this series. Tell you what, Daniel Murphy's having a tough June, Carp. That would have dropped in May. Yeah. Hit by a pitch on the first pitch of the month he sees, and then that happens thanks to Freddie Galvis. That reminded me of Omar Vizquel the way he made that play. Yeah. Zimmerman waited for that pitch, hammered it to third. Blanco with a bullet to Joseph, and the inning's over. That's second inning in a row, a leadoff hit. Nothing to show, but they lead by one. He went seven innings, gave up just five hits, one run on those five hits, struck out seven Phillies, 108 pitch effort. The Nats won on to win that game, eight to one. So he had the red jersey on that night. I'm going to say it was Saturday if they were in the Reds. It was. And by the way, that night the Phillies stranded seven runners. Max had them 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position. So they had a few chances. Nats out hit the Phillies 8 7, but they only scored that one run. 
And that was on a Cameron Rupp homer. David Lowe, the right fielder, strike one, bottom of the third underway. Max 28 pitches now, 20 strikes. The pitcher Morgan on deck. David Lowe, 30 years of age, parts of four years in the big leagues with the Royals and the Orioles. Philly signed him as a free agent end of January. He was called up April 18th after starting the season with those Iron Pigs of Lehigh Valley, the Phillies Triple A. And the one two pitch. He offered. No swing, says Mike Esterbrook. That's not close. Off speed pitch, no chance for the left hander. So Max starting to pile up a few strikeouts. Four of the first eight he has faced. Nissan tracks it. Well, the changeup. Was the pitch that he had trouble with last time out against the Cardinals? You remember to the arm side, it was kind of squirting out. He couldn't get it in the strike zone. He's obviously made the adjustment. He's more on top of the changeup tonight, throwing it in the strike zone. And like we've said a few times already, the fastball's jumping out of his hand tonight. He's got a live one. Anna Morgan 0 for 11 this year, 2 for 37 as a big league hitter. Daniel Murphy right side eight hitter nine hitter retired top of the order Herrera join the Nats for our 12th annual celebration of D.C. Virginia Maryland youth baseball and softball June 12th all groups enjoy an on field parade who doesn't love a parade prior to the game and kids 12 and under invited to run the bases following the game first 5,000 youth participate in the pregame parade receive a Nationals athletic compression sleeve Courtesy of Innova Sports. Maybe it's like the one Daniel Murphy's got on after he got plumped tonight. Bob Henley could excuse use me. one of those after waving numerous runners around. Pardon me, excuse me. Yeah, I know he's doing that. I'm um, coming down your row and you're not stopping. I, I me. wonder how he smells. I mean, it rained a little bit today. A little damp and musty is the fanatic. Excuse me. Coming through, nothing to see here. Pardon me. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh. Good thing is, is he didn't spill any popcorn. Scherzer plays a breaking ball outside to Odubel Herrera, 0-2. Next one right after him struck him out to start the ball game. His evening getting underway, bottom of the first. Fun with some Nats fans. Excuse me, pardon me. Down and in, and Scherzer continues to work hitters over from both sides of the plate with that off speed stuff. Another change up, I believe. Yeah, down and into a lefty. Often considered a danger zone. Phillies went one for nine first time through the lineup with a jam shot by Cameron Rupp that dropped in right field. There's a clean single for Herrera. So in the series, he's three for nine. And Cesar Hernandez coming up. But that ball not hit very hard. Not much contact at all by the Phillies so far. Mickey Morandini, the first base coach for the Phillies. Former shortstop. Still love hearing his name on the PA here. I still love hearing Harry Callis say it on radio or TV. Here's Cesar Hernandez, bouncer to Murphy first time up. Herrera had a good jump. He's six that's, out of ten that, stealing. That's just not good baseball. If you're hitting and there's two outs and you see your leadoff hitter with a monster jump, yeah. like Herrera got right there, you have to take a strike. I don't care if you're facing Max Scherzer or Nolan Ryan. Watch the jump that Herrera gets. I mean, this bag is stolen. 
and he fouls it off. And now in a one nothing game, Herrera has to go back. Part of hitting second is taking a strike for a leadoff hitter that gets on, especially yeah. with two outs. Well, a very late time called by Dana DeMuth. Herrera started at first. He stopped. The last start, Max said he, he didn't have any problem with Greg Garcia calling the timeouts. He just thought they were a little late. Yeah, and as it turned out, he didn't call the second one. The umpire right. did. Alan Porter just heard voices in his head. There we go again. Well, Herrera was going. Herrera's gotten two good jumps for no good reason here. Yeah, his teammate is stopping him every way you can. <laughs> to go tackle him. <laughs> Run out there and knock him over. Phillies don't run a lot. 21 steals. They've been caught 18 times. Well, that whole thing's been working, Carp. There's only been one attempt against Max this year, and it was a caught stealing. Wilson Ramos, 5 for 15 against opposing base runners because pitchers are doing a good job when he's in there. And now it's Hernandez 0 and 2 with two outs. Nothing Nationals, bottom of the third. And the first inning, two out double by Ryan Zimmerman. After Daniel Murphy was hit by a pitch. Herrera holding. Swing and a miss. Change oh, up that changeup is yeah. working tonight. Two strikeouts this inning. Scherzer, first three innings, not a problem. Great rail works. Brings you Anthony Rendon. He's our do up. Anthony having a struggle here in Philly. 0 for 9 in the series, but he has 51 hits. The fourth inning of Nationals baseball is brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com tonight. Into the 8 o'clock hour here in the city of brotherly love. Citizens Bank Park, where the Nets are 4 and 1 this year. Rendon, Ramos, and Taylor, 5 6 7.
Anthony Rendon had six hits in the St. Louis series, a four game set with a base on balls, including a homer and a base hit his last two times up on Sunday. Since then, he hasn't been able to get a hit. Drives that ball to right center. And that is headed for the scoreboard on a hop. Anthony Rendon smoking one. So he has a dozen in the double column now to go with a triple and four home runs. Well, good approach off a lefty that's not going to overpower you. What do you do? Let the ball get deep, thinking about driving it the other way. So nice swing by Tony Two Bags. He perfectly placed in the gap. And now let's see if Wilson Ramos can move him along, whether he scores him or gets him to third. Ramos a swinging bunt type of hit down the third baseline first time. Ramos in the series two for eight with a walk. But this game's important for a number of reasons, Carp. We talk about Dusty Baker and the getaway day win and how that translates because you're on the bus, on the plane together. You know, you can use momentum from a getaway day win and talk about how awkward it is when you lose. Do we talk? Do we not talk? Can we play the music? And sometimes those getaway day wins are important. But going into an off day, too, yeah. you don't want to get into that mindset of taking the off day before the off day. And Almost I was trying to drive it. I don't think Dusty Baker will ever let his club do that, especially in a Max Scherzer start. But teams in the past have done that, you know? You get into that, oh, we're off tomorrow, so we're off today. Wilson Ramos, 25 RBIs, 17 of them in May. A pitch to get to. 0 2. <laughs> Nationals have had their leadoff man on now. Three consecutive innings. Second time the leadoff man's been at second. Trying to move him. <laughs> Off speed. Ramos right field line that'll move the runner here comes Rendon and Wilson Ramos starts off May the way he ended actually June the way he ended May so the Nats lead two nothing and Wilson 26th RBI but playing the game the right way that whole at bat you can see the inside out swing from Wilson Ramos he was trying to move the runner and when you play the game the right way, generally you get rewarded. Good things happen. So how does he finish the at bat? Look at it. It's, it's chasing him in. It's a slider. And he gets his hands inside the baseball, just dumps it into right. So the thought process, that whole at bat by Wilson Ramos was on point, and he gets rewarded with a base hit and an RBI. Nicely done. Two for two is Ramos. That's starting to pile up the base hits now. Line moving here in the fourth inning, and Michael A. Taylor is next. Ramos at second base nobody out second inning Michael hit a sharp grounder right at the shortstop Galvis
I mean, the money's in right field based on what Adam Morgan has done to him tonight. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Zimmerman's double. Jason Worth had a bolt to right. Rendon's double, and then Wilson Ramos. Let it get deep. Go the other way. He hasn't really shown you anything on the inner half for a strike, so just totally disregard the inside part of the plate and look out over. Try to drive the ball that way. Well, we talked about second time around the order. The Nationals are three for six. Taylor way out ahead of the off speed. Eleven pitches already this inning and nobody retired. Taylor can't get it. Off speed had him fooled. One out, fourth inning. Third strikeout for Adam Morgan. Next five ball games. It's a long road trip, isn't it? Three at Cincinnati over the weekend. Geo, Strasburg, Roark will pitch there. Another day off Monday, and then on to U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago for the first time in six years. The last time we were there, Jim Riggleman had just resigned, and John McLaren, who ironically is on the coaching staff of Pete McCannon, led the Nats to a two out of three series win there. So Geo geared up for Friday night. Have to be good in that ballpark. 86 home runs this year at Great American Ballpark teams combined. That was an 11, right? Yeah. I think it was 2010. Well, I was here. Were for you it. with us? Yeah, it had to be 11. Thing? Yeah. Okay. I had just gotten here. The manager quit after an 11 game winning streak. And I was thinking, well, what in the world have I gotten into? And then John McLaren with one of the better snaps you will ever see when he got thrown out at USO. That was awesome. awesome. Oh, it's fantastic. He's still the all-time percentage leader among Nationals managers at 667, two I, for three. I remember Bill Ladson had a tweet that said Jim Riggleman resigns. I thought he resigned. I thought he had an extension after the game. I'm like, oh, the manager's staying. He's been complaining about not having a multi-year deal. They finally signed him. We got down there and he quit. Yeah. It's like, what in the world? What's and he's with the here? Reds. We'll see Riggs this weekend. Up and into Danny Espinosa. Fly ball to right first time. And my English isn't that good, so I thought he signed a good extension. And then after that, the Nats went to Anaheim, and that's where Davey Johnson was introduced as the new manager. Got a lot of attention out there from his days with the Dodgers. And a 1 2. Espinosa pops it up. It's over the dugout and out of play. Two again. Espinosa to center. And with two outs, Max Scherzer will be the hitter. When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. So 21 year old third baseman Drew Ward with the Peanuts. He is all over the Carolina League stat sheet. Extra base hits. Look at that. Total of doubles and then Boone Whiting. Five wins for the Potomac Nationals. 54 innings so far. Young well, talent on the way at the high A level. Because from Potomac, the next one is Harrisburg. Max Scherzer robbed of a hit by the diving David Lowe. As well as the Nats are swinging the bats, they have been robbed of numerous hits over the last week or so. So the RBI by Ramos makes it 2 nothing. David Lowe always known for his speed. That was a beautiful play.
Hey, how about some Geico highlights? Gonna show you some Phillies plays. They're throwing some big time leather at the Nats tonight. I have two four star plays on my scorebook. This is the first one by Freddie Galvis. Almost a double play. It was close at first. Give Chris Heisey tons of credit for getting back on this because he had to be close enough to second to make it had that dropped and now David Lowe coming in hot using two hands watch this Exmo shot of it two hands head to the baseball the roll kind of looks like Johnny Manziel slip and slide by Wemmo nice play that was awesome if you're a right fielder though uh, the opposing pitcher should never drop a line drive in front of you ever if he burns you over your head great but it should never happen. So here's Max, 43 pitches, 31 strikes, through three, two hits, one a bloop, one a ground ball. Five strikeouts. He got Andres Blanco to end the first inning. Blanco way out ahead. Changeup's been Max's best friend tonight. He got a good one going. Blanco. Jack's one to center. Taylor just cruising to it. It's a lot of fun watching Michael A. Taylor play center field. One out, fourth inning. That's probably the hardest hit ball of the night. Next up, Tommy Joseph and then Cameron Rupp. Talked about Tommy Joseph when he came up to pinch hit the last couple of nights. Still only 24 years of age, catching days behind him because of three consecutive seasons with concussion problems. Plus a left wrist that had him on the DL for a long time two years ago. So they optioned Darren Ruff May 13th and called up Joseph who was hitting 347 at Triple A Lehigh Valley and leading the International League in batting. He went from prospect to suspect to back to prospect. And the suspect part was because of injuries. Yeah. Good story, man. Stick with it. Taking off the 40 man roster. Didn't even go to big league camp this year. Just had a good minor league camp. Went to Lehigh Valley, tore the cover off the ball, and finds himself in the big leagues. You got to root for guys like that. Well, they're going to need a first baseman here. Well, he's going to get an extended look. And Max 97 missing low with the heater two balls two strikes. You might be wondering why Ryan Howard isn't in the lineup tonight. One for 18 career 11 strikeouts against Max Scherzer. Two two with one out. Front door. Cutting right to the strike zone. Number six for Max Scherzer. Mercedes Benz will track it. Did it come back? Doesn't matter. Pretty good frame by Wilson Ramos. Dana Demuth liked it. And I think that's the first slider that Tommy Joseph saw in that sequence. It was pretty much fastball change up to that point. Mike Maddox digging what he's seeing, and so are we. Cameron Rupp jammed the first time up, able to dump a single in the right field. Looking pitch. No swing, says Clint Fagan. Counts even 1 1. I'm 
kind of glad Odubel Herrera got a hit. Because you'd hate to have a no hitter going with one bloop. Yeah, if, if Kevin Ruff was the only hit of the night, that would have been a tough one to sleep on. Yeah. And he's got that kind of stuff tonight. The changeup is looking exactly like his fastball. One, two, swing and a miss. Max Scherzer has the Phillies' bats very quiet. And when we come back with a 2 0 Nets lead, Chris Heisey will see his third pitch of the night. This is a new contour. Get right to the good stuff. Two nothing Nats as we cruise to the top of the fifth inning. Nats offense, 51st inning runs in 54 games. And it started in the first again today. Daniel Murphy got plunked by a first pitch fastball up and in. And Ryan Zerman down the corner. The ball pinballed around down there. Murphy scores one nothing. Then Wilson Ramos in the right frame of mind trying to move the leadoff double by Anthony Rendon gets the bonus. Base hit, RBI, and that's where we're at. Two nothing. The right frame of mind. It's where you said the money is tonight, right field. It is. Hasn't really showed you anything inside to think otherwise. Chris Heisey, one pitch per at bat tonight. Fouls out to Tommy Joseph. Here comes Jason Worth, and here comes Dan with more. Bob, we talk about how Jason Worth is such a good base runner. I asked Davey Lopes the other day what it is about Jason that makes him so good on the bases. He worked with Jason here with the Phillies back in 2007. Davey pointed to a night here in Philly that Worth stole second, third, and home in the same game. He said that shows the mental aspect needed to run the base as well. It takes more than just speed. You've got to have guts. You've got to be confident. You've got to have great instincts and great knowledge of the game. He says Jason Worth has all of those things. And in the first game of the series, he took second. He then took home to give the Nats the go ahead run. Great base runner. Davey Lopes likes that aspect a lot in Jason. And I think we've talked about this before. And there's a great base running coach who was an outstanding runner in his big league career. I still think about that game against the Cubs a couple of years ago. Jason Worth stealing third because he perceived they weren't paying enough attention to him the way they were lined up. And then he scored the game winning walk off run on a wild pitch. Oh, two in a hurry, and he hooks one hard. Look out. There's two things in my mind besides instinct that make a good base runner it's you have to be fearless. And you also have to have a manager that's okay with you making an aggressive mistake once in a while. Because if you have a skipper that's going to give you the evil eye when you make a mistake or get on you, then you're not apt to take chances. And a bouncer worth reaching out for an 0-2 pitch, and that's two quick ones for Adam Morgan here in the fifth, bringing in Daniel Murphy for the third time. If you're intelligently aggressive as a base runner, I don't think too many managers have a problem with. It's the guys that think they're invisible. And take weird chances that that's that's when you get the manager's attention. You're not invisible. They can see you and that wasn't a good idea. And 
try to sneak a close up by Dusty. He knows you're there, camera guys. <laughs> He's, Dusty's great on TV. He misses nothing. He was fantastic with the ESPN in the playoffs last year. He's wonderful on television. So Murphy left on left here for the third time, robbed of a hit by Freddie Galvis last time up. And Murphy a tapper to first to the bag, Tommy Joseph. And by far, Anna Morgan's easiest inning of the night, seven pitches. Break. We'll let you know if it did. Ladies' night, Thursday, June 30th. Nats take out the Reds, 705 star. You get that scarf for free. There'll be all kinds of neat things like a DJ, a fashion show. We'll recruit some players to come out there and sign autographs, all kinds of cool stuff. On June 30th, Nats take on the Reds. Go to nationals.com slash ladies' night for all your details. Cool and the gang going to be there? Galvis, max 55 pitches, 40 strikes. Great ratio tonight. He's been on the attack right from the start. When he threw 10 of his first 14 pitches in the zone in a 1 2 3 first inning. Down and in. He's gone down there against some lefties several times. So 15 hitters, nine first pitch strikes. And that was really off speed. Talk about slowing down a guy's bat. Chris Heisey with the grab. And Scherzer now, five in a row. He's retired nine of his last ten. Was that a change up at 77? <laughs> Let me see that again. It might have been a curveball. I just missed it. No, that's a change up. It's a, that's a borderline EFIS pitch. His change up averages 85. This one is 77. Interesting. You talk about subtracting from the pitch. What if Galvis thought it was a curveball was going to come back to him and it never did? I'm calling that an EFIS pitch. We've never seen Max Scherzer throw a 77 mile an hour change up. Tyler Goodell fly ball to Worth first time up. This one that way out of play. What did Gio put? Do you think he put Ephus? Yeah, I, I would have written ch ch change up. Yeah, it was so slow. I like Gio with short hair. That's my opinion. I think it's good. Getting ahead, mixing things up, obviously changing speeds all over the place, eye levels, you name it. Max has done it so far. Oh, 
Fastball. Goodell frozen. Strikeout number eight. 97. So change up 77 for the first out. Then 20 miles an hour faster on the 97 mile an hour heat. That locked me up too. Max Scherzer, 20 mile an hour difference in two outs. How about that? Inside some numbers, BNC. So strikeouts. Max too short of 100 now. Started the night with 90. It's just been great tonight. And he was third behind Kershaw and Jose Fernandez coming into this one. He was tied with Steven Strasburg, who will do his thing Saturday in Philly. Max is going to get to that one quickly. Rifles it to first, and David Lowe retired. And Scherzer, seven straight and 11 of his last 12. That was a 10 pitch fifth inning. Beautiful night in Philadelphia. Right down the Ben Franklin Parkway there. We're in South Philly. Oh, geez. And the Nationals are a coach short after this. Oh, just there's so many things wrong with that on so many different levels. It's just wrong. That whole thing is wrong. It just. That's awful. It's just awful. That's that's not making baseball fun again in any way, shape, or form. It's not Chris Spire. No, he's still there. He's alive. But somebody just got eaten. Zimmerman hammers one base hit. Per Nets policy though we can't tell you during the game who got eaten. Yeah. Ryan Zimmerman has hit the ball hard three times. The double down the right field line. Waited last time on an off speed pitch. Hit it right at Blanco. And this one too hot to be handled. He hit some low bolts the last couple of games that if he gets any kind of elevation he's about to go on one of those home run tears. I mean he already had two in that four for four game against St. Louis but he is locked in. Ryan Zimmerman two for three tonight and four for eleven in the series. So here comes Anthony Rendon who plugged the gap to right center and one hop the scoreboard last time up. He then scored on a Ramos base hit. Strike one from Adam Morgan who's due to lead off in the bottom of the sixth. Nets have out hit the Phils six to two. And to your point earlier, not many strikes on the inner half. He tried to go in there and missed. Well, he's kind of showing you in there for effect, but until you command the inner half of the plate, I don't have to respect it as a hitter. So then I go just go back to looking out over and elevating. I'm some belt high out over the plate. I get extended on. That's a great take to get the count in his favor. And 
Anthony Rendon is at 90 career doubles after his two bagger last time. That is off the glove of Freddie Galvis. Base hit left center. Zimmerman had to hold in case the line drive was caught. Two on, nobody out. Wilson Ramos is next. Line is moving against Adams Morgan. Zimmerman with a base hit the foggy bottom, and now Anthony Rendon with a line drive single to Penn Quarter. Runners at first and second. And how about the middle of the order tonight? Zimmerman, Rendon, and Ramos. They are six out of eight. Each has two hits. Ramos takes up and away. So Ramos now in this series. Three for ten on base four times. Cameron Rupp visiting with this pitcher. So in the first three innings, one hit each time. But the first inning double by Zimmerman, the big blow after Murphy was hit. And then in the fourth, the Nats finally got two back to back. Rendon's double, Ramos base hit left field. And here they go again with Zimmerman and Rendon. Ramos to right. High fly ball. See you later. Ramos three for three. The Nationals lead five nothing. Seventh home run. RBI total up to 29. So a single to foggy, foggy bottom, a single to Penn Quarter, and a home run to Columbia Heights off Adams Morgan. The money is in right tonight, folks. And Wilson Ramos, I mean, this is just a good match for him, right? He loves to drive the ball that way. He's yeah. been doing it all season long. You got a lefty who's been working you away most of the night. You already got a couple of hits, so why not try for a tater? Nicely done by the Buffalo. Nationals have 20. Well, here's a long, here's a ball hit in the air to right field. Nationals only their second three-run bumper of the year, believe it or not. A lot that's, of solos. That's number 70 on the year, right? Has the ball club. Going the other way, three run shots. All of a sudden, it's five to nothing. Pretty good catch by that guy in the Phillies jersey. Tanner liked it. Jose Lobatone has to go take a helmet off, and he likes to do that. Hmm. So the Nats now. 70 home runs. St. Louis lost 3 1 at Milwaukee today. They started the day with 71. Mets lost their ball game. They started with 73. Watching that power to the opposite field is awesome. And then Taylor overmatched on an off speed pitch. Michael A. Taylor down on strikes for the second time tonight, 0 for 3. Danny Espinosa will be next. 20 home runs in the last nine games. And you know it had to start raining homers because it's the sixth inning. 13 of those home runs in the sixth inning or after. In that stretch. Espinosa cranks one to left center. See you later. Six nothing. Danny Espinosa, second homer of the series, seventh on the year. His second right handed homer of the year. RBI career number 75. Wow. Well, that one was to Chinatown. Wow. Danny Espinosa laced one against St. Louis, <laughs> two in this series. And we have four out of five guys hitting safely here in the sixth inning. Scherzer's on deck. Long visit here by the Phillies pitching coach Bob McClure. 
Because they've got to get the phone ringing in the bullpen and somebody throwing. Show me some taters. They're flying out of the campsite right now, folks. Wilson Ramos to right. Now Danny Espinosa tomahawking one. Look at the downward angle the backspin created on that low liner for his seventh home run of the year. Good for Danny Espinosa. Hit a bolt in the gap first time up. Nothing to show. Now he's one for three with a home run. Line moving here in the sixth. Scherzer robbed of a hit last time. Just like that, six nothing. And by the way, and there's lefty Brett Oberholzer, the ballpark the Nats are headed to has yielded almost twice as many home runs as this one. Yeah. Now that's mostly because of the home team. Phillies don't hit many, the Reds hit plenty. Well, if you want to just talk about it from a player standpoint, it plays a lot smaller in this place for sure. Yeah. Great American launching pad. Swing and a miss, two outs. Top of the order, Chris Heisey. In Cincinnati over the weekend, 82 degrees, partly sunny Friday. Maybe some rain Saturday or Sunday, 75 degrees. So it'll be warm enough over there. Heisey one for three with a bunt base hit. And that's the first pitch he has taken tonight. Oh, two. That weather in Cincinnati's bullpen with a 6 7 6 ERA might equal some bombs. We'll see. Now that's a bad forecast for them. See? Reds right now playing just over 300 percentage baseball at 17 and 35. They are 19 games back of the Cubs. They've always been a Thor in the. In the Nats side, though, for some in reason. In that ballpark, they have. That's a tough place to get those last six outs. Two and two to Chris Heisey. There you go. He did, says Clint Fagan. And the inning is over. Zimmerman single, Rendon single. Wilson Ramos, other way, way out of here. That one's worth two looks. And then watch the pull side pop from the right side by Danny Espinosa, who's now homered four times in his last seven games. Town starting next week on the night. One dollar drink specials, peanuts playing cards giveaway. On the 11th, the big highlight, the Anthony, the Ant Rendon figurine giveaway. 
Family fun day on the 12th. Call them, check them out online. The Potomac Nationals. Catch your shortstop, go deep. They, they were the show last night, remember? Ramos with the strike him out, throw him out to Espinosa. Espinosa with the infield into Ramos. They were supposed to do that last night after we showed that highlight package and they came up. They were just off a night. That's all right. The pinch hitter is the newest Philly. Former Oriole, former Royal, and Houston Astro. Jimmy Paredes, who was four for 15 at Toronto after the Orioles traded him May 16th, and then just two weeks later he was DFA'd by the Blue Jays. And then a day or two after that, the Phillies sent some cash to Toronto and got him to try to shore up their offense a bit. Swing and a foul tip. Paredes, a 257 career hitter. In parts of six years with Houston, KC, Baltimore, and Toronto. Scherzer way down low to get a strikeout. Number nine. We always talk about the secondary pitch du jour for Max. What's it going to be? If he can repeat the changeup like it is tonight, he's reminded me of Pedro Martinez and his changeup, the way he's got it going here. This is the best changeup we've seen all season from Max Scherzer. That's including the 20 strikeout game and every single outing he's had. He's got a great feel for it. It's the same arm speed as his fastball. And it looks just like his fastball, but 10 miles an hour slower. Definitely his best pitch this game. Top of the order, Odubel Herrera. Ground ball base hit to right last time up. Ball one. Everybody thinks of Pedro Martinez and his fastball 94 to 97, but it was his changeup which separated it from everybody else. Yeah, same motion. Pitchers tell you same motion, same arm speed. What's a hitter to do? Two and one do the selective Herrera, who has walked 34 times this year, fourth most in the league. Low and inside, ball three. I'll tell you what, if Wilson Ramos holds us a tick longer, he might get the call. I think this was a strike. Yeah, well, he was set up away. And you're seeing more catchers do that now with the box and the umpires getting judged on the, the pitch track. Before in the day, if you were set up away and it was across your body, just threw it back. But now you're seeing catchers reach across their body and hold it there and almost frame a pitch that misses its location by two gloves. The reason why umpires are calling a strike, a strike, and a ball, a ball, because they get graded on the box. Herrera is showing some sort of emotion or whatever as he draws a one-out walk. Cesar Hernandez is next. Phillies box, Herrera on twice, base hit third inning, walk right there. The only other hit, Cameron Rupp, bloop in the second, that's their only other base runner. That broke a streak of nine in a row retired by Scherzer. Hernandez ground ball and a strikeout.
He has struck out every position player in the lineup tonight. And that change up floating up and away. Two and two with one out. Short lead by Herrera. Swing and a very late miss. Max Scherzer strikeout number 10, 39th time career, 14th as a Nationals pitcher. Well, after throwing a lot of changeups, that fastball's just by everybody. That was just 94, but it was up. And it was set up by a bunch of nasty changeups early in the sequence. Two down. Blanco the hitter. And a ball driven to left. That's trouble. Into the corner. Heisey has to play it. It sits at the bottom of the wall. And they will hold the runner at third. Blanco muscles up and hits one deep to left. That's the first time Max gonna have to reach back tonight. He's been on cruise control since the get go. And Andres Blanco just it went right to the base of the wall. Nice play by Chris Heisey getting in quick. And Juan Samuel had to hold El Dubo Herrera. I thought he was gonna send him, but Heisey made a nice play. Tommy Joseph, a strikeout. Looking in the fourth after a pop up to second. In his first at bat. First runners the Phillies have had in scoring position tonight. Yeah, here's here's the I got this extra gear stuff. You just tell by the look in his look in his face. Got the snarl going. Heads up. Ball laced to left, but Heisey right there. So the Phillies hit a couple of balls hard, but they're still not on the board. And into the seventh, Scherzer and the Nats, six nothing.
majority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Well, the dugout pretty good and relaxed right now. It's all Nationals here. Six nothing looking for a sweep in Philadelphia. Stop by the UPS store for all your printing, copying, and other business needs because together there's nothing we can't solve. Phillies call on their 26 year old left hander, Brett Oberholzer, 12th appearance, bad ERA, 6.56, 31 hits in 23 innings, 21 strikeouts, but 13 walks. Jason Worth is first, and he's one for five career with an RBI against the lefty. Worth 0 for 3 tonight. Well hit line drive to right field his second time up. And the counts 1-1. One, one. Nine o'clock straight up. BC at PDK here on Masson. It's all Scherzer, Ramos, Espinosa, Rendon, Zimmerman, and the Nats tonight. A lot of guys contributing in this one. And worth a fly ball that'll be over by the barrier. And a sliding attempt and an amazing catch by David Lowe. Rob Scherzer back in the fourth. That's about as good as it gets when you're approaching the hard barrier over there. Well, sticks for Jason Worth, but David Lowe is putting on his own personal highlight show tonight. That's his second web gem he's made down there, kind of negotiating around that curve. Full out down six to nothing, laying out like that. Pete McCannon has to love the effort by his right fielder tonight. That's the third four star play on my scorebook, two by David Lowe. Here's Murphy one for two against the lefty career. Murphy 0 for two hit by a pitch and a run scored back in the first inning. Two one and Murphy hits one extremely hard to left center. That ball is beyond the reach of the center fielder Herrera. Deflects out near the 409 mark and Murphy into third with a triple. And that's an 11 game hitting streak for Daniel Murphy. That ball was roasted. Third triple of the season for Murphy. And was that a loud sound or what? Fastball right down the middle stays inside it nice. They've been trying to crowd him all night. He finally got something out over the plate and he drives it. In the left center field gap it tailing away from Herrera who made a good effort. You're saying are they going to make another one of those plays. <laughs> Daniel hits Murphy checking in with his first knock of June. I had shades of another inside the park homer there for a moment. Yeah. Is that ball deflected out towards center. Tyler Goodell able to get to it. Now Ryan Zimmerman infield in a chance for his second RBI of the night. So in this series the Nats have 23 hits. And the extra base hits are just amazing. Zimmerman drills one left center caught by Goodell trotting home Murphy. Ryan Zimmerman does the job with a good swing and it's seven nothing.
Good at bat by Ryan Zimmerman. Take them all, they count just the same no matter what the score is. So another RBI for Ryan. He had one his first time up, now his fourth time up. Good job of scrambling back and tagging up by Daniel Murphy. He was thinking about going. So the Nats in the series, 10 singles and 13 extra base hits, including seven home runs. Offense is cool. There's Rendon. Four for six against this lefty. You can win a meet and greet with Anthony Rendon. Check out Masson Nationals on Twitter for your chance to win. That's twitter.com slash Masson Nationals. Brought to you Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. Two and one to Rendon, who's two for three tonight. Two runs scored. 53 hits on the year. Second on the ball club to Murphy's 78. On base for the third time. All right, line moving this inning. Line was really moving last inning. Wilson Ramos just touches one to right. Oh, such a good sound coming off his bat. Same way with Espinosa. So one to right, one to left. High five smiles. Wow. Boys are having fun and they're screaming wow a lot. Maybe it should be the wah squad instead of the bomb squad for the bench. Figure it out. Wilson Ramos three for three four RBIs goes up hacking hard hit Galvis slides outstanding play say if the Phillies don't make about three plays it might be 12 to nothing tonight as it is the Nats in the seventh by seven. The pitches in which he struck the Phillies out with. What's this one right here? Okay, there's a fastball for a strikeout. That's another heater. So two fastballs. That's a slider change up. So fastball, slider, change. Another change. That was a foul ball, but we're going to count it as a strikeout because it's like softball. There's a fastball. Yeah, just been mixing it up, right? One slider for a strikeout, a bunch of changeups, a bunch of fastballs. Time for Toyota Keys for Kids after this pitch. To Cameron Rupp. $37 donation of the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. That's Toyota Keys for Kids. And I forgot to say, swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Bottom seven. Oh, 
Max right there. Dropped it, kicked it, threw it, one out. Not a problem. The day off helps tomorrow, but the pitching of Max Scherzer tonight maybe makes it even better to have a totally rested bullpen going into a place like Cincinnati for the weekend. Not that you don't have confidence in your starters, but it is a place that often is tough to pitch deep into games. Galvis 0 for 2. Side with 95. And that just off the plate, three and oh. Galvis taking four in a row. He's aboard with one out. We were talking about the bullpen being well rested, and Dan has more on those guys. Bob, some of the guys well rested, some not so much. Good for Max to go deep into this game because both Felipe Rivero and Jonathan Papelbon had gone three straight days coming into today. Probably not available. Now Max Scherzer, who will have two days in addition to his normal turn because of off days coming up, can work deep into this game and save the bullpen, not allow Felipe or Papelbon to be needed. Yeah, kind of odd for the Nats to have a day off tomorrow, another one Monday in between the series at Cincinnati and Chicago. Plus all that voodoo they've been doing down there takes it out of No balls, one strike to Goodell. He's 0 for 2, Blake Trinan getting loose at least the body down there that balls out of here walking a blast and the Phillies are on the board For Tyler Goodell, 10th RBI, and you got a slider that didn't do what Max Scherzer wanted it to. Caught it out front. And on a night when the ball is really, really jumping here at the bank, Tyler Goodell takes advantage. Only the Phillies' 40th homer of the year, Atlanta with 40, or rather 21 coming in. The only lower total in the National League. Nobody on deck yet. Pitcher spot. After David Lowe. And he will pop one up to short right. Daniel Murphy will let Jason Worth call him off. Two outs. For the Nationals baseball live with MLB.com at Bat App. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game day videos, and StatCast. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablets. Oliver Perez is throwing. And Peter Borges, who's 0 for his last 11, will be the pinch hitter here. Borges against Scherzer, 0 for 6 career. And Max just bolts that 94 to the inside edge. Ninety five strike two. Following his losses this season, Max usually turns things right around. 2 0, solid ERA. 
striking guys out. Then a low slider for strikeout number 11. So Max Scherzer through seven, giving the Phillies a couple of runs there, but the Nats still by five. Baseball on Masson brought to you by visitannapolis.org. Create your moment at visitannapolis.org. By Night Point Systems, they offer the technology you need when you need it. And by Dominion, depend on us for more than energy. I think that's Ben Franklin's house, but I'm not sure. Or the Fanatics' house, who knows? That's been where he lives. Does a great job of capturing the crowd. Yeah, literally. Loving them, they love him, and he holds their attention. Stealing kids, that's not cool. For every Nationals walk, care first Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes 50 bucks to support girls on the run, DC. The Nats have drawn 191 walks, that's $9,550. Care first Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Here's left hander Elvis Araujo, first appearance of the series. Michael A. Taylor, one for three against him. Fast one ball, one strike. Excuse me, Carp. Fastball slider change. Fastball 93. Taylor levels off and laces one to left. Nice swing, joins the hit parade. 0 for 3 into a 1 for 4. Nicely done. Hit number 11 by the Nationals. A rare single. <laughs> by the way, this ball club's gone. I had to look at Carter Myers, our stat guy on that one, because he's been feeding us unbelievable stats on all these extra base hits and all the offense this team has generated. Here's Danny Espinoza, who lasered one out of here to left last time up. Araujo checks Taylor. And you saw Max Scherzer on deck. 96 pitches, 67 strikes. Danny Espinosa, two for 10 in the series, but loud line drives. Two home runs, three driven in. He has walked and scored three runs. Well, that is right down Broadway or Broad Street, wherever we are. I was wondering today, when they have their parades, do they go from the ballpark to City Hall, or do they go from City Hall to the ballpark? City Hall to the ballpark. All right. I yeah. feel like they should go both ways at the same time, just pass each other, one go in one direction. You know, it's hard to have a parade on Broad Street because everybody parks in the <laughs> middle of the street and leaves do. their car there. <laughs> I've never seen anything like Broad Street. I, I, want I just want one of those. I was People about. have reserved parking in the middle of the street. Now the kids have their parade on Kids Day. I want one of those. One.
One and two to Espinosa. That's a swing and a miss for the first out here in the eighth. Here comes Max. Oh for three tonight a hard luck go for three a couple of strikeouts around a fantastic diving play by David Lowe in right field. At times over the last week and a half the Nationals have been hitting the ball so well it has required fantastic plays to retire some of the hitters. St. Louis series comes to mind. They were the worst defensive team in baseball but they made fantastic plays in that series. It was a four game split and the Phils have done some of the same here. But the Nats are putting constant pressure on the opposition the way they're hitting. Two and oh Scherzer goes butcher boy faked the button and swings away. Oh, that's close to a block. He's stepping almost to Max Scherzer and throwing the first. Not that it matters, but it sort of does. Scherzer squares again. Backs away, three and one. Now it's full. Let's see if the Phillies throw over here to see if Max Scherzer's bunting in a 3 2 count. Swinging all the way, and that is a double play. Took Hernandez a moment to get it out of his glove. And Michael A. Taylor doubled off first on a 4 3 to end the eighth. The line drives continue off the bats of the Nats. Michael Taylor could have got back. He looked like he was confused on how many outs there were. Watch him. He just kind of shuffles back. If he runs, he's got it. Nationals are gone in the top of the eighth inning. And so we're going bottom eight, and hopefully Max Scherzer as well. Top of the order coming up. The Ohio rolling right by the Great American Ballpark. Geo, 3-3, three and 357 three, ERA. And against the Reds, he's 2-1 and one with a 1.83 earned run average. He'll have to be good. Brandon Finnegan going for the Reds. 
Young pitcher who's one and four. Johnny and Ray 630 Nets extra on Mass and two. First of three in Ohio. Max Scherzer, as I mentioned, 96 pitches, 67 strikes. He's given up his 16th homer of the year, but only four hits all night. Here's Herrera. Max could easily have two hits himself. He's robbed his second time up, robbed right there, swinging the bat too. Herrera jammed and pops it out of play. Just over 19,000 here tonight. Billy's about to fall under 500. Nets trying to set them down for their sixth loss in a row. Max trying to go six and four. Blake Trinan. And Herrera, good job of driving the ball the other way. Heisey over to get it. Yeah, Chris Heisey is a very good defender wherever Dusty Baker puts him. And nice run and play right there. Did a pretty good job of holding some runners at third base. Good play. I'll tell you what, stat I forgot to tell you earlier. So gather around the campfire, kids. Last year in April and May, 21 unearned runs for the Nats. This year in those two months, just 12. So their defense. Last year, not so good. This year, early, great. Nationals ended up with 90 errors last year. It was much better the second half of the season, which Ian Desmond always was better after the break, and so was the ball club. They were in the middle of the league. And this ball out to center, not hit well at all. Danny Espinosa matches Freddie Galvis from earlier. And that's a fine play, two outs. On cue. Danny Espinosa's had a nice series with the bat and the glove. Watch this play. Back to home plate, over the shoulder, into a slide, not a problem. Max digging the effort, yeah. So are we, Max. Yeah, saving him pitches at the end of the night. Here's Andres Blanco. First pitch breaking ball in there. The only thing that would have been better on that play if there was a runner on first and he would come up with that big arm of his and let it rip. Try to double him off. Big rip by Blanco. It's empty in the tank. 104 pitches for Max. Still throwing hard. Last time out, 92 and seven innings against the Cardinals. That's a well hit ball. One hopper to Heisey, and the Phillies have their fifth base hit. Two for Blanco. Both the other way. Well, ideally, Dusty Baker wants Max Scherzer to finish this inning, but you also don't want to run his pitch count up with a five run lead too high. So if you look at the days off, Max wouldn't pitch until a week from tonight in Chicago. Dan mentioned the odd configuration with Thursday and Monday off on the same road trip. In fact, uh, because of the off days and the way things are configured, Steven Strasburg pitches once on this whole trip after just going at the end of the homestand. Eighty six tight slider late break. One one. So Blake with Oliver Perez, who's up for the second time. Right. 
close. Ball two. been having success with that front door breaking ball against right handers tonight counts 2 2 Tommy Joseph 0 for 3 Shaded up the middle. 2 2 count. Tommy Joseph has a little Greg Lazinski in him, doesn't he? Stance where he's sitting up there, kind of body shape. The bull. They list him at 6 1, 215. He looks a little bigger than that to me. 2-2 pitch again. Short lead by Blanco. Max holds anyway. And a fly ball to right for Jason Worth. We're going to the ninth here in Philadelphia. The Nats looking for a sweep on top 7-2. To you by Airlines for America, where airplanes land, opportunity takes off. And by Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years, federally insured by NCUA. That is a great shot. Look at that. City Hall, beautiful. Look at that. It's really great to have a hotel room right across the street, too, when the big bell goes off every oh, hour. Yeah, that's awesome. Not the Liberty Bell, but another big one of their own. So Scherzer, 111 pitches, 78 strikes. Nicely done, Max Scherzer. Change up, Mui Bueno tonight. Fastball too. Slider was great. He was on point. Elvis Arajo still throwing. Chris Heisey, 0 for 1 against him. Leads off for the Nats. He's 1 for 4 in that number one spot tonight. And this one out to center for Odubel Herrera. Johnny Holiday, Ray Knight. Plenty to talk about again tonight. It's the Nats Extra Post Game Show presented by W.B. Mason. When this likely sweep is over, Nats have three outs to get. Here's Worth. More 
more one more chance for them to boo him before the Nats come back at the end of August. Trying to check in. It was the Phillies years ago who openly stated they could not afford to keep Jason Worth on that ball club and keep all those guys together. Gosh, by that time, this team was so veteran, guys on long term contracts making so much money. Jason Worth, the one guy who was a big part of that squad, that offense that they let go. I remember in 2010 when I was covering the playoffs for the Giants, he was the one guy from the Phillies that when he came up, he scared you. He was that locked in in that series. Doing everything, running the bases, making plays. Worth hits this one pretty well out to left center. Herrera, he can't get it. It'll one hop the wall, and Jason Worth will check in and stop the presses. It's another extra base hit for the Nats. Well, that'll make for a happy plane ride for Jason Worth. Obviously, the W all he concerned about, but now all of a sudden he's got a hit, a nice salvage. Could have been a two for five, but he'll take a one for five and a double. Nicely done. Here's Murphy, who gets a chance at another multi hit game. He has 26 of those to lead all of baseball. Next closest, Starling Marte of the Pirates with 22. Blasted a triple over the glove of Herrera. Deep left center last time. Daniel Murphy against Araujo, two for five. And uh, the pitcher had him reaching. Hernandez, two outs. And for Ryan Zimmerman, a chance for a three hit night, maybe a three RBI night. Well, I think the fact that Anthony Rendon heated up tonight and he's got a couple of hits and a walk, he's been on base three times, should allow Ryan Zimmerman to see something there. And Rendon had a couple of tough games to start this series up, but he's locked in tonight. So that is how you protect each other in the lineup. He should get a pitch. So Ryan two for three, double, single, sack fly. RBI total 26 on the year. Nationals have outscored the Phillies in this series 16 to 6. And Dusty's out toothpicked Pete McCannon 20 to nothing. Maybe more. What does he go through? About five a game? <laughs> Six? Seven? Depending on the game. Does he ever get splinters, you think? Nets about to go three up on the Mets. Marlins tied late at home, eighth inning with the Pirates, 2 2. Nationals are looking for their fifth sweep and what would be their third on the road following at Atlanta to start the season at St. Louis. And the home sweeps against the Braves and Minnesota. 2 2, Zimmerman pops it up out of play. Swing and a miss on a pitch in the dirt. 
So if the Nationals will put seven runs on the board tonight on 12 hits. Murphy had one of them. Zimmerman drove in a couple. Gentlemen, we'll have a lot to talk about when this one's over. Three outs to get for the sweep. Blake Trinan gets that assignment. I see the arsenal for Blake. Throws that fastball of his 95 98. Tons of sink on the two seamer. Slider to go with it. Occasional change up. 25th appearance. ERA at 3.00. And opponents hitting 239 against Blake. Yeah, he hasn't pitched since Sunday. Had a one batter appearance there when Matt Holiday chopped a single off the plate on him. Still a close game at that point. Nats went on to win big. So here's Trinan, well rested to take on Cameron Rupp, who tonight is one for three and 0 for two against Blake Career. Nats trying to win their fourth in a row and go 12 games over 500. It's an easy 97. Not for the hitter. Phillies have Milwaukee coming in here while the Nats go to Cincinnati. By the way, play in Colorado tomorrow while the Nats will already be in their hometown. Comebacker trying and couldn't get it. Murphy, kind of an in between hop on him. They're going to give Cameron Rupp a base hit, and they should. And just out of the reach of Blake tried and he tried to get this watch it just off the top of his glove and Daniel Murphy in a do or die situation couldn't come up with it. And Cameron Rupp spelling a knock it down line quick he runs well. And two for four tonight for Rupp. He might be in line for a lot of playing time with Carlos Ruiz really slumping. Oh for his last 21 and hitting 222. Galvis drives one to left, but Heisey is in the way of everything over there tonight. One out. Friday night, Cincinnati. Gio Gonzalez and Brandon Finnegan, who's one and four on the year. Gio will be trying to go over 500 with his record. And he's been good against the Reds in his career, two and one, with a 183 ERA.
Tyler Goodell two run homer last time up and no doubter to left. Lake Trinan rifling one in there one ball one strike. And that's the foul ball you see off the sinker. Nasty. 87 on the slider, two outs. Well, disappearance slider off a 97 on our sinker. Look at this, just drop off a table. Nice and easy. Nat fan with the beard in the background, digging it. One out to get, and that's David Lowe facing Trinan for the first time. Look at all the categories. On the road, that's about to go 18 and 10. In the East, 21 and 13. That's not all the categories. There's other ones, isn't there? Well, those are the ones pertinent to where we are and who we're playing. They've actually been better on the road than at home, where they're just 15 and 11. Runner was going. Second time Dave DeBuse worn one tonight. The right shin guard. You know, the best part about the, that umpire's costume that Ed Montague gave me for Halloween one year carp is the steel toe shoes. Those are awesome. I mean, you could go just wear those around town and do some damage. You could definitely kick extra points with them. Old style. Huh? Oh, yes. Yeah, like on. Lou the Toe Groza used to. Like Dempsey, remember? The guy with half yeah. a foot that drilled the 63 yarder. So with Ryan Howard on deck, David Lowe, one ball, one strike. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Tapper foul. Yeah, steel toe, baby. Go ahead and throw a fastball off my toes. I don't feel a thing. Have a tough time getting through security at the airport with them. I'll toss them. They don't yeah. let you in. Throw them out. Who throws a shoe? You're shade? an umpire. There you go. One and two with two outs. And low trying to hang in there. We talked last night about the Nats trying and trying to get 11 games over 500. They finally did it. Tonight would be the first time to be plus 12. I don't feel like they were 12 over last year at any time. Just a guess. 14, yeah. And Obviously. The Nats only ended up four games over 500 last year. Two two now. Close. No swing, says Mike Estabrook. And the count is full with Ryan Howard waiting. The ten over was the highest they got last year. Being told. Three two. And David Lowe having a good at bat, fighting off some pitches by Trinan that are right in on his trademark.
Payoff pitch again. He walked him. Pretty good at bat by David Lowe. Here's Ryan Howard, who's one for three career with an RBI against Blake Trinan. Dusty Baker coming to get Blake Trinan. Oliver Perez has been up twice. Blake had to throw a lot of pitches there. He threw a lot of strikes to David Lowe. Fouled off a bunch before walking. So Perez and Howard. Lefty lefty straight ahead. That he has seen a lot. Five for 28 career against Oliver Perez, who makes his 22nd appearance, 14 innings, 18 strikeouts. Well, two pitches, fastball, slider, and a whole bunch of different arm angles, windups, deliveries, and for the most part, pounds the strike zone, comes right after you. Always adds a good vibe and energy to the ball game when he comes in, and he's got to get a big out. Ryan Howard, this ain't over yet. Oliver Perez first appearance of the series. So Cameron Rupp started the inning with that bouncer over the pitcher's mound. Freddie Galvis lined out hard. Goodell struck out and there's David Lowe who worked a good at bat walk against Blake Trinan. Shift is on Murphy in short right field. Keep in mind that Dan reported earlier that Rivero and Papelbon both may be unavailable tonight. And if the worst possible thing happened here that Howard hit one out of the park, it would be a safe situation. For somebody who would come in, or maybe Perez would stay in. Well, he's standing, he's getting loose, he's moving around. And we say this about other teams all the time, so I feel like I have to say it right now. Was Oliver Perez anticipating coming in this game? He's been ready for a while, but sometimes mentally you're thinking, oh, five run lead. Blake Trinan's got this. Runner goes to third. Nobody over there. All that matters to the Nats is a strike call to Ryan Howard. And you always feel like Oliver Perez is ready, but just every once in a while, it's a call that he'll take every time. Just mentally you get ambushed. Howard skies one to center. Michael A. Taylor. And that's a sweep for the Nats in Philadelphia. Yeah, I don't care who you're playing or where you're playing. It's hard to sweep a team on the road. The Nats just did that. They played wonderful baseball here the last three days. Billy Stranding seven runners tonight had only six hits all evening. Max Scherzer was great. Bullpen good enough to get the last three outs. Wilson Ramos fantastic with the bat. So the guys are 12 over. 
They're going to be on a four game winning streak when they enjoy a day off in Cincinnati tomorrow. Geo Friday night we begin coverage at 630. This has been a presentation of Masson. Johnny and Ray straight ahead and from Philadelphia. It's a sweep. See you later.